Uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our virtual builders breakfast. Uh, we are excited to welcome you today and our distinguished speakers. And we are also very excited to announce a new initiative uh, at the city of Richmond uh, for incentives for high performance houses. Uh, before we get going, just a couple of quick housekeeping reminders. Uh, a gentle reminder to please do keep yourself on mute to reduce background noise. And also, as usual, we will be uh, monitoring the chat section where you are encouraged to put in your comments and questions. So myself and my colleagues will be monitoring chat and uh, we'll be posing the questions to our speakers. So uh, as you see, we have a packed agenda today. I am going to start with a brief uh, overview and introduction to these new incentives, and then we're going to uh, have a presentation from Passive House Canada, followed by presentation by one of the leading Passive House designers in the Vancouver region. And then finally, we are going to have a short overview of another set of incentives that are now available provincially through Clean BC. So we are going to have uh, somebody from BC Hydro present on that. Uh, and then after each presentation, we're going to have a short Q&A period where you, where you can pose your questions specifically to that speaker or that on that presentation. And then at the end of uh, the third presentation, uh, around 940, we're going to have a larger Q&A about passive house design and construction uh, techniques and all the issues concerning that. Uh, so you can ask questions from uh, either presenters then. So, in terms of introduction, as you know, we in the city of Richmond adopted the energy step code around three years ago now. We started at step one for single family and duplex uh, residences, and step three for townhouses and uh, apartments in part nine construction. Uh, just this past December, about three months ago now, we had the first update uh, to our step code uh, implementation regulation, where we moved up to step three for single family and duplex uh, with the possibility of building to step two with the condition that you use a low carbon energy system. So as you see in the middle uh, column there, our current bylaw requires for part nine residential buildings <coughs> Uh, for both townhouses and apartments, as well as single family and duplex to meet step three or step two with low carbon energy system. And as you have here uh, in different presentations, we do have a somewhat aggressive timeline to move to the highest uh, level of the step code by 2025. So the next schedule uh, updates are going to be the end of this year or early next year in January 2022. And then finally, in the beginning of 2025. So those two uh, updates are uh, tentative now, and they are subject to further consultation and council approval. And I also wanted to give you a heads up that uh, in the next month and then in June, we are going to have consultation sessions to our builders' breakfasts, where we will be presenting a more detailed plan, and then we would like to also collect your feedback on our uh, next moves. So we have had great success in our implementation of this step code so far. Uh, and you have seen, some of you have seen these results uh, in uh, earlier presentations. So when we look at our step one single family and duplexes uh, in Richmond, uh, and as I mentioned until very recently, we were at step one. But when we look at the final results uh, based on the as built floor door test and then energy modeling, we see that our step one houses are on average performing uh, equivalent to a step two house. So when you look at the, uh, the bottom uh, set of results here, where we're showing air tightness, you see that our step one houses are on average uh, at 3.1 uh, air changes per hour. Uh, and that's almost as good as a step two house where it is required to meet uh, three air changes per hour. And then when you look at the overall energy performance, we see that we are on average again seeing around 12% improvement over the prescriptive requirement. And that's even better than a step two house. So this gives us uh, a lot of confidence in our rollout of the step code and also uh, 
a lot of pleasure uh, to see that builders in Richmond have uh, stood up to the task and are in a way leading the way uh, in the implementation of this step forward. So in that somewhat aggressive timeline that you have to go from the baseline of the BCB building code 2018, which was August of 2018, where we, uh, when we implemented the step code to all the way to net zero energy ready uh, performance, which is step five for part nine uh, by 2025, well ahead of the provincial schedule. We have a basic program of enhanced uh, compliance verification and a lot of training and support, such as through these uh, builders breakfast, but we also have a parallel stream where we would like to provide incentives to encourage builders that are in a way past that point and are now well adopted to the uh, energy step code uh, framework and feel comfortable, uh, you know, entering into the higher or the more challenging aspects of it. So we do want to provide incentives for them to uh, lead the charge and then in a way get ahead of the curve in uh, meeting net zero energy ready performance in their uh, projects. So these new incentives that we are announcing today are part of that initiative. Uh, so right now, if you want to build to step four, so remember the requirement is step three. Uh, now, if you want to build higher uh, than the minimum requirement as per our building by law regulation, so you are going to get 5% additional floor area ratio up to 2.35 uh, square meters for your mechanical equipment and then 50% refund of your building permit fee at final. So upon successful completion of final inspection, when we have confirmed that you have indeed achieved step four performance, you are going to get 50% of your building permit fee back. If you go, if you aim even higher, if you wanna to go to step five, then you're going to get the same uh, additional floor area ratio at 5%, up to 5 square meters for your mechanical equipment, and then full refund on your building permit fee uh, at final. And then our most uh, luxurious uh, incentive package, if you will, is for people who would like to achieve certified passive house performance, uh, in which case they would receive up to 10% additional uh, floor area ratio, and then five square meters for mechanical equipment, and then 100% uh, building permit fee refund. Uh, so we think this is a very uh, attractive package now. Uh, this is, of course, our first step, and we will be monitoring and reviewing and revising, if need be, uh, these incentives. Uh, I don't want to get into the details, but very quickly, uh, for those of you who are already uh, convinced that this is something worth trying. Uh, we have a relatively simple application process, but we want to make sure that you have a conversation with you before you even submit your building permit uh, application. Uh, so if you are aiming for either step four or five, we require that you submit a request letter, uh, basically summarizing uh, your intent to use the incentives and achieve the requirement performance level with uh, supporting documents. For, for certified passive house projects, it's a bit more uh, involved, but uh, again, it entails a, a letter along with supporting letters from a passive house designer and a passive house certifier. We do have a new bulletin, uh, Building-46, where we have all the details about the incentives uh, as well as the application uh, process. 